Hello guys, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. This is going to be game number 4 between China and Korea. And let's see how this one progresses. Now if you haven't seen the previous games, of course you're very welcome to go and click on the annotations below inside the description and watch games 1 through to 3. And um, basically, yeah, if you missed those, of course, you want to start off with those. So, obviously, spoilers are coming, so <laughs> leave now if you wish. You know, I shouldn't be asking you to leave, but, you know, you get the point. All right, so let's have a look. The builds are going to be a little bit different at the very beginning, which is interesting enough. Let's introduce our players very quickly. We have Root Hydra on the bottom left-hand side of Orbital Shipyard, spawning as the Blue Zerg. Now, Hydra, he is representing Korea in this one, so you might be aware at this point that Korea is actually up 2 to 1, meaning that they only need 2 more wins to win the series. Looks like an early expansion coming out for both players, very similarly timed as well, just to note that. And his opponent, of course, in the Chinese writing here, who you might have seen in the previous game, is actually Xigua, or Xigua, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but of course I'm sure somebody in the description might correct me on that one. So let's see how this game is going to develop. Looks like all the timings so far are very, very similar. The only thing that I have to say is Hydra seems to be one uh, one drone ahead, and I assume that's probably because of an extractor trick or something like that. But it seems like he is just a little bit ahead. And everything is pretty standard at the moment. So just as usual, of course, guys, if you want to leave it a thumbs up at the end of the video, you're very welcome to. And I'm sorry for having to remind that all the time, but unfortunately it's required. And uh, I'm actually thinking of starting a uh, a new series, not rather, not really a series, but a new addition to my channel. So basically, every time there's a new series, for example, one of these best of sevens, I will do like a question of the series kind of thing. So an example of that would be: How do you feel about Zerg versus Zerg? Do you feel that it's too toxic, or you know, you get the point, something like that? Or how how do you feel about the Terran Marine and Siege Tank um, meta that is at the moment? Um, who do you think is the current player, best player in the world? You know, those kind of things. And just to basically have that throughout, let's say, let's say if this, this is the best of seven. So let's say if there were seven games, I'll quickly mention it at the start of the video and also include it at the end. Now, I'm not going to do it for this one because I'm already kind of halfway through since I thought of it, but I will start it off in the next one. So it looks like a bunch of Zerglings have gone out here for Xigua. Now, these are just scouting Zerglings just to see if there's any sort of shenanigans going on. As you can see, no... No dodgy, um, no dodgy hatcheries have been put down anywhere, so that is all perfectly fine. And there is Zerglings and Banelings on the way shortly, so pretty typical for Zerg versus Zerg. The one thing I have to say is that Xigua has actually opted to go for a third expansion, or third base rather. Has not been scouted yet, but will be scouted once this overload re reaches its destination. And once that happens, it's actually going to be quite dangerous for Xigua because he uh, Hydra's going to know that he's actually behind on his economy. He's going to know that he's behind on pretty much everything. And if he knows that he's behind on his economy, he knows, of course, that he can... Or not economy, but his unit production. He's going to know that he can indeed continue on with a bunch of aggression from both Zerglings and Banelings. Now, let's see. There is a few... Oh, these Banelings were actually put down in pretty bad places, having to cancel those off, otherwise, of course, they would be lost for no good reason. <laughs> Looks like Hydro Zergling, just a little bit better, but still getting cleaned up just shortly after. And it does look like, even though Hydro started off with the the early aggression, or the, the early base, he's still a little bit ahead on units. Now, whether that's going to make a difference or not, we're yet to see that. Looks like this one Zergly managing to take off the Baneling. That's actually very good for him. Of course, when you manage to trade off Banelings for one single Zergling, you are doing so damn well right here. And let's see what's going to go on here. Looks like there is a Roach Warren coming down for Xigua. Better swap these out. And a Roach Warren going down for Hydra as well. Now, I don't think that Roach Warren has been spotted. So both of these players just playing on Instinct right now. Which is perfect. And there we go, the engage onto here. There is uh, Xigua's own Banelings here. I like the way the the color of the Banelings gets so intense when you increase the color intensity up. And there's so many Zerglings on the map right now. And 
Now this overlord, and uh, no, looks like he decides to bring the queen back here, not to fight the overlord, because of course these zerglings have run in. Are they going to try to do a bit of economic damage? No, they're not. Looks like getting taken out before they do anything at all. There is currently two gases up for Xigua, and I believe that Hydra is exactly the same. Yes, he is indeed. Now, one thing you might notice is why does Hydra not put both the geysers on the first base, saturate that out, and then continue on with, with gases on the second base? Reason for that is actually because if, let's say, for example, you have a Zergling run by in here, they run in here, they start clearing out the mineral line, and if you have only got uh, gases in one base, what that means essentially... Ooh, there's actually a baneling head here. What that means essentially is that they could potentially take out all of your gas production out in one little run by. Whereas if you spread your gas over two bases, at that point, even if they clear up this whole mineral line, you still have somewhat of a of a gas production on the other base. Now it looks like these Zerglings did manage to run here, managing to take out a few a few probes or drones rather. Six in total have been taken out already. Not a bad Ling run by actually. I have to say that this is actually quite good for him. So if you can continue with this, maybe just take out drones here and there. That will eventually start to stack up quite significantly. Looking at units lost tab, he has actually lost six, or he's actually, uh, Hydra that is, took out six extra drones from Xigua, which you might see is actually making a difference here. 51 to 60 workers. And Hydra is actually in a bit of a better position, despite the fact that Xigua actually started off with the hatchery first. So all of those little things making very, very big differences. Now, one thing to notice, looks like we have four gases currently. I wonder if you're going to get any more than that. Have to point out as well that Xigua has gone for two more geysers. So currently he's sitting on six geysers. He has the lair on the way. Question is going to be, are we going to be seeing Hydras here very soon? Or is this just going to continue on with a Roach Ravager Zergling engagement? So a bunch, a bunch of Roaches here out for Hydra. This is going to be quite a good position for him. If he wants to push out on this now... He is getting spotted, so of course, um, Xigua is going to be preparing for it. Is he going to manage to snipe that? No, he does not. That is going to try to ravage it, but unfortunately, he didn't manage. Now, this Overlord is going to take 10 years to go across the map. Look at him. Four roaches here. Going to be extremely, extremely slow getting across there. Now, it looks like there is a bit of an engagement here. The ro Zergling's just running around, scouting around, and of course, catching out a hatchery. That's actually quite important information. Uh, one thing you never want to do, of course, is let a Zergling run rampant with his expansion. So, definitely something that you need to watch out for. If you scout out the expansion, you would be in a much better position to uh, fight it off afterwards. So, as you can see, that might exactly be it. These Zerglings could potentially be used just to, once he sees that these Zer units are distracted, just run these Zerglings in here and clear out the base. It's probably exactly what is on his mind. And there we go, this Overlord actually getting itself some movement speed. Now, of course, this has been spotted. The question is going to be, is he going to pull back all his units for this? Looks like Hydra, on his own side, actually deciding to send a few roaches just to harass this off. Now, just to note, Glider Constitution is actually up for Sigwa, which means he's going to have a nice advantage in terms of movement speed. Now, I think that the army supply here is a little bit favoring Hydra, but he's not in a great position, getting a lot of his units actually surrounded there. So, one thing to note is he did manage to, to cancel out the, uh, the expansion, and also, that expansion was not cancelled. It was destroyed. So, that is quite huge right here. So there we go, the full-on engage. I think the Hydra is in a much better position here. His army supply is extremely heavily favoring him right now. And just to note as well, this base is now fully up. Going to be saturated very, very fully in just a few moments. So let's see what's going to go on here. These roaches are actually having a nice surround behind this expansion. I think if he just does one volley onto it. There we go, managing to take it out there. This one, of course, getting taken out on this occasion. And a huge surround here. This could be deadly for Xigua. He could potentially lose the game right here, right now. And these roaches also doing a bit of damage here inside the main base. All of these roaches now streaming into this natural. Oh, look at that contaminate. Actually, we did go down on the... Uh, the hatchery here so no more production coming out of that and there we go gg has been called hydra taking game number four for korea that's pretty much it for game number four we're currently at three to one in favor of korea so very well played here by hydra let's see what happens in game number five